Yo, what is good guys? It's your host HD Samurai here and welcome to the channel. Today I'm here to present you guys a new what if. This being the what if movie for what if Naruto was Jiren's reincarnation. I want to thank y'all so much for waiting for me patiently throughout these times. As you guys already know my content, I post a video, I leave for a while, and then eventually I come back to post a video. Now, with that being said, guys, I do want to announce a few things. Number one, since it's 2024, guys, I decided that I'm going to announce that I'm quitting doing part series. Not doing what is, just doing part series. Because I, if you guys seen my upload schedule, you guys would already know that I no longer have time to do the part series. So from now on, I'm just making full on what if movies. And along with making these what if movies, I'll also be editing a lot more for these videos. So yes, you guys will now be getting less quantity, but more quality for my videos. So with that being said, guys, I'm pretty sure I've announced enough. So why don't we get started with this video? Once again, I appreciate all of y'all support for me being away for so long. And with that being said, why don't we get started? You're never gonna make it. You're not good enough. There's a million other people with the same stuff. You really think you're different, man. You must be kidding. Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it. It's impossible. It's not probable. You're responsible. Too many obstacles. You gotta stop it, yo. You gotta take it slow. You can't be a pro. Don't waste your time no more. Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? All right. So to begin the what if, we'll start off with Naruto after being born and after the whole nine-tailed incident. Naruto's childhood life would not exactly be the best, as he was treated poorly by the villagers, and even Haruzen didn't have enough time to spend with him. However, to Naruto, that didn't matter. After all, the strong showed no weaknesses. Naruto would spend most of his time training out in the wilderness, as he would be facing off against different animals that would appear to try challenging him, only for them to be soundly beaten by Naruto. While at the same time, Naruto at this current point in time would actually unlock a power, a power that would be so powerful it would shake the very foundation of the elemental nations, as this would be the power of Ki. Naruto would awaken this at a young age after the events of the Nine Tails, as during this time, Jiren's reincarnation had fully been completed. He had fully reincarnated into Naruto, and due to this, his abilities transferred over as well. With this, Naruto would begin to master and hone his ki, as he will be doing many things such as training with it, using it to physically attack certain enemies that approach him, while at the same time doing things such as meditation to gain control over it and increase its capacity. That would be Naruto's following routine for the most of his childhood life, until eventually it was time for him to start the academy. Naruto took to the academy like water, as he instantly was placed at the top of the class. Surpassing those in Taijutsu and intelligence such as Kiba Inazuka and heck even Sasuke Uchiha, the one who was supposed to be the rookie of the year in the main timeline. This would end up sparking up Sasuke's inferiority complex as he would actually be openly trying to challenge Naruto at any instance, trying to be better than him. But unfortunately for Sasuke, Naruto had a power that was just way too great for him to handle. By this point, after a few years in the academy, it will soon be time for them to be placed on teams, with Naruto once again remaining at the top of the class, but doing nothing more but simply training. As this is when Team 7 would then be formed, with the team being Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto, the iconic hero, with their Jonin sensei being Kakashi. Soon after meeting the rest of the team and after getting their introductions out the way, as Naruto's introduction symbolized pretty much all his character, that being the fact that he simply wants to become the strongest, and surpass all those who came before him. Now, after getting these introductions out the way, Kakashi would then announce the bell test and tells them where to meet up, to which we are not flash forward to that day. As we soon see all of Team 7 gather up into that one area, this is when Kakashi would then announce the bell test as well as how it's going to go, before finally telling them to begin. And as the rest of the team would then rush off, you will see that Naruto would stay behind. He was not going to run away from his opponent. And of course, seeing this, Kakashi would think that Naruto was being arrogant, only for him to be unshocked as Naruto would soon begin to fight him and actually be able to keep up with Kakashi. Kakashi would be surprised at this, considering the fact that he's holding back quite a lot, but yet Naruto is still able to keep up with him. So he decides to increase his strength slowly but surely, only for Naruto to keep matching up with it. Soon after a while, his Kakashi then decided to stop playing around, as this is when he then ends up kicking Naruto full force in the stomach and sending him to the water. Now, as Naruto was sent flying, Kakashi would worry that he maybe took it too far, only to be in shock as this is when Naruto would then manipulate his key to the point where he was now just floating above the water. Kakashi would be in shock about this as at first he thought it was just water walking, only to see that Naruto was truly levitating off the water. Now, as Kakashi tries to put into words about what he just saw, this is when Naruto would then use Kakashi being dazed as an advantage as he would appear in front of him and give him a powerful key punch in the stomach. Knocking Kakashi out for a moment, 
And while Kakashi will be knocked out, Naruto would then use this to his advantage as this is when he then charges up another energy punch as he punches Kakashi in the face and him flying. Soon after this, Kakashi, after slamming against multiple trees, will then get up as he can sense Naruto's presence. As hearing Naruto's footsteps approaching, Kakashi would then realize he can no longer take it easy on Naruto as this is when he would then end up getting up and finally decide to resort to using jutsus. He's not going to end up reaching for the Sharingan just yet. As this is when he would then begin to shoot Naruto multiple amounts of jutsus to which Naruto, and to Kakashi's surprise, would try walking right through them. Now, Kakashi would of course be worried, thinking that Naruto was maybe going psychotic or something like this. However, to his surprise, Naruto would actually taint these blows. Kakashi would be surprised by what he was seeing, while internally Naruto was actually using this as training. As Naruto was trying to learn how to gain perfect control over his ki, and at this very moment he was using his ki as a kind of like a body armor to protect him from the blast. However, it takes a generous amount of concentration to which Naruto doesn't have full mastery of it just yet. Which soon results in him actually taking big damage as he tries to walk through a generous fireball only for him to get hit by the attack pretty brutally. As Naruto would of course end up actually you know, stumbling from this attack, Kakashi would realize that Naruto was going to continue harming himself until he gets to him. So having no other choice, Kakashi would have to knock out Naruto using his full strength since Naruto was not going to go down by a simple neck chop. With soon after this, we will see the end of the bell test. Eventually, after a long speech about why they should respect each other and why teamwork is essential, Team 7 would actually end up passing the exams due to the fact that both Sasuke and Sakura will admit that they are going to work with Naruto during the next time around. To which Kakashi said that that was good enough, so he decided to pass them. And soon after that, the following months will be nothing more but D-rank missions and teamwork training. Throughout that time, Naruto will continue his training with his key as he begins to get the hang of flying. Now, he had to admit the whole flying thing was honestly purely on instinct alone and in that he didn't really have the full key control to do it again. But still, he trained for it and due to this, he got better and better at flying every single day and he began to master his key completely to the point where he's actually able to stockpile it, which he uses as a trump card just in case a situation calls for it. And at that same instance, the rest of Team 7 also decided to get serious as each one of them had seen how hard Naruto was training. They literally saw the man doing push-ups, sit-ups every single day, and not only that, but him improving and using his weird power. Now, while no one really knew what exactly it was, they knew that Naruto was pushing himself hard, and he knew that they were just he was just going to soon surpass all of them. And this would unknowingly light a spark on all of Team 7, as this would cause each one of them to train sacredly without everyone else knowing about it. So in some way, in some form, Naruto was influencing the rest of the team to get more serious. As soon after a while of doing nothing more but D-rank mission, it will finally be time for the Land of the Waves. During that time, they will be tasked to protect Tazuna the Bridge Builder, as they will soon end up heading off towards the Land of the Waves, facing off against countless enemies. For example, the two Tuning Brothers who attacked them in the beginning. However, unfortunately for the Tuning Brothers, Naruto in this timeline was way stronger, as after they, of course, so-called killed Kakashi, they will rush at Naruto, only for Naruto to appear in front of the first brother, as he ends up elbowing him in the face. Breaking the brother's nose, as before he could fall back, Naruto would then sweep kick him, causing him to fall over, and before he can get any further, this is when Naruto would then wrap it up by knocking him unconscious with a full-on key punch, as he slams a punch so hard into his gut that he makes a crater into the ground. This would actually surprise everyone, including the other brother who is now terrified of Naruto, only for Kakashi to appear and then interrogate them. This is when the full mission details are then described, as soon after that, Kakashi would interrogate Tazuna, to which he reveals everything. And after a while debating on whether or not they should go, they will soon decide to go and complete the rest of the mission for the Land of the Waves. But trouble doesn't stop there. As going through this mission, they will soon encounter the threat of Zabuza, who will make his appearance known. As he would wield the Executioner's Blade, he would then face off in a battle against Kakashi, resulting in Kakashi getting captured, and leaving the rest of the Team 7 behind. However, thanks to the training that they had gotten and due to the fact they've been pushing themselves hard these past few months, they are actually way stronger than they were in canon. As this is when Sasuke wouldn't tell Naruto that they should work together, only for Naruto to completely ignore him as he rushes towards Zabuza. Zabuza would summon out a water clone to deal with the so-called brat, as the clone would try striking at Naruto with a Kakushiner blade, only to be surprised as Naruto would then disappear in front of its eyes. As this is when suddenly, all around, the clone would then get barraged by multiple punches, causing it to be evaporated instantly. As Zabuza tries to understand what was going on, this is when suddenly Naruto would then appear in front of him, which causes him to deactivate his water prism jutsu, as him and Naruto would then get into a clash of their own, 
with Naruto actually being able to keep up with Zabuza for a moment before realizing that the demon of the hidden mist was not to be underestimated. As he begins to fight Naruto, using the mist to hide away and try to block Naruto's senses, Naruto would slowly begin to get stronger and stronger as the fight would go on. With eventually the fight ending as Zabuzo tries to end the fight by using a vortex jutsu only for Kakashi to come out of nowhere and do it first, knocking Zabuza out and giving him the opportunity to end him, only to be stopped by Hunter Nin who begins to spell out a bunch of lies to them as we soon later on know that this is Haku. As after that the demon of the hidden mist then retreats allowing Team 7 to return back safely. But the thing is Naruto was more disappointed as he realized that his strength was not enough, there was still more to be done. So with that, Team 7 would then be given 7 days to train as Zabuzo was still alive as Kakashi would announce it to them, and with that, Naruto would spend the time once again training, pushing himself even further. However, he was not the only one as along with Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura would also be training. Sasuke, feeling outdone by Naruto and not being able to do anything, was pissed off, so he was pushing himself even further to the point where he unlocked his second Tomoe. And as for Sakura, well, she didn't want to be left behind by her crush as well as her other teammate as both of them were of course the top of the year and she didn't want to be left behind by them. So this would cause her to push herself even further as she would actually try picking up some genjutsu scrolls from the village and decides to try to learn them. As with all of them training, 7 days would then pass by giving them the opportunity to take on Zabuza once again along with the person who was working with them, Haku. As this is when the fights would then break off into two parts with Kakashi and Naruto facing off against Zabuza since Kakashi is still way too weak to face off against him at this point while Sakura and Sasuke actually would face off against Haku. As the fights would then begin, we would then see both Haku and Zabuza losing to both parties. As with her Genjutsu and Sasuke's superior speed and strength than he did in canon, both Sakura and Sasuke was able to beat Haku since he couldn't really land any blows because of Sakura's Genjutsu and Sasuke was just way too fast for him to really do anything. While for Naruto and Kakashi, it was easily one-sided. As Zabuza couldn't hit Kakashi because Naruto would beat her to block any hits. And not only that, but Naruto's impact were getting stronger and stronger each time they land. As Zabuza couldn't even believe that this kid was only a Genin. As if he were to compare his strength, he would say himself that Naruto's strength at this point should be that of a high tuning to low Jonin. As soon after that, we will see Team 7 defeat both Haku and Zabuza preventing them from trying to kill Tazana the bridge builder while also finishing them off. At that same time though, this is when Gata would then make his appearance known as he will begin to tell that he was going to end them all as he brings out a bunch of mercenaries with the people who lived in the land of the waves deciding to also rise up against them as Inari would be leading the charge. If you're wondering how Inari and his mother survive against the encounter against the bandits, this was because of the fact that Kakashi actually left a clone behind to you know protect them just in case. After all, he was not dumb enough to just leave them there while, you know, they're obviously a target because Tazuna. So with that being said, seeing that the fact that they were now currently being outmatched, some of the mercenaries begin to lose hope only for Gato to tell them to attack. Only for it to end in a slaughter as Team 7 takes care of all of Gato's men before suddenly deciding to end his fate by giving it to the villagers, who decide to have their fun with Gato. With this signifying the end of the Land of the Waves. As soon after this, we would then see the Team 7 then return back to the Hidden Leaf Village to where Kakashi would give the report about the mission to Haruzen. And after telling them that they did a job well done and that this would be put on the record, Team 7 was left to do whatever the heck they wanted, to which Kakashi would actually announce early on about the tuning exams. Seeing the fact that his team was actually working together and seeing the fact that they're actually getting stronger, Kakashi had decided that it was time for him to take things seriously, to where he decides he was actually going to train Team 7. So with that, Team 7 will then begin to get trained by Kakashi as well as training by themselves. Sakura will learn more Genjutsus while Sasuke would actually get better with his Sharingan and learning even more about the Uchiha style as well as learning a few more fire, fire Jutsus. At that same time though, Naruto was growing in power much faster than all of them, to the point where even Kakashi was having a hard time keeping up with him even with the Sharingan. Naruto was pushing himself beyond the limits as his stockpiling energy was going through the roof. And not only that, but Naruto had decided to have a little encounter with his tenant, the Nine-Tailed Fox. A confrontation with the beast went pretty much as you expected it. Naruto actually respected the Nine-Tails, surprising him, as he tells the Nine-Tails that he will want to fight him. With the Nine-Tails, of course, mocking Naruto, telling him that he stood no chance, but Naruto would tell him that as soon as he finds the key to the seal, they will fight, to which the Nine-Tails, of course, agrees to. 
And due to this encounter, the Ninetales and Naruto would at least be cooperative with each other, as both of them have at least some type of respect, with Kuruma respecting that Naruto could even stand in front of him, something that only a very select few of individuals are even able to do. With Naruto, of course, just respecting the Ninetales, because he's literally the strongest of all the Bijus. Yes, he knows about all of them, and of course, I mean, he was the top of the class, come on now. So with that being said, we now move on to the next following days until the day of the tuning exams. Team 7 would enter and breeze past the tunings making a disruption until eventually they end up encountering Guy's team. In this timeline, Rock Lee does not challenge Sasuke and instead challenges Naruto, to which Naruto would accept. Now instantly, Lee would rush at Naruto trying to throw a flurry of punches to which Naruto would just stand there and he would tank these blows. Now first thing Naruto noticed about these blows was that they were being held back by a lot. Like he, Rock Lee was not even going full power with these punches, he was holding back. And he could tell that Rock Lee could hit even harder. As after a while of just simply hitting Naruto and seeing that it did no damage, Rock Lee then decided that it was time for him to bust out the Hidden Lotus. However, this is where things would then fail drastically for him. As he would appear in front of Naruto trying to kick him up into the air, Naruto at the very last second would weave out of the way, and this is when suddenly he ends up stomping on the ground. This would end up causing a miniature shockwave, throwing Lee off his balance, as this would Naruto would then kick him to a wall, slamming Lee hard into it as he would nearly be knocked unconscious, with Naruto sending Lee a nod of respect, as he was honestly impressed by Lee's brief show of strength, and he honestly was honestly looking forward to fighting him in the future. So soon after that, Team 7 would enter into the stage 1 of the tuning exams, to which they end up getting, you know, meeting the rest of the other you know, rookies of Konoha, until eventually it was time for the exam. I'm going to brief past this because it's, it's not really that important. Naruto is just able to pass the exam easily along with the rest of Team 7, and so finally it's time for the Forest of Death. And after eventually getting their scroll from Anko, Team 7 would then rush into the forest as they end up le leaping through trees and eventually end up encountering a team that has their scroll. The team tries to put up a pitiful fight, but they'll be taken down by Sasuke, honestly, as Naruto doesn't even have to do anything in this fight. Sasuke, after gra grabbing the scroll and realizing that it was exactly the scroll that they needed, then decided it was time for them to leave and head back to the tower. So with that being said, Team 7 decides to go, only for them to stop as this is when Naruto would then sent a wind blast approaching, along with the wind blast with a, a rush of a ginormous snake. Naruto seeing this then begins to unlock his key as he begins to emit a powerful energy as he stops the snake with one hand. Now, of course, this pushes him back slightly, but I mean, it's a ginormous snake, come on now. But still, Naruto was able to hold it back with his hand, as this is when Orochimaru would then arrive. He would see Naruto holding back his snake, and he was honestly impressed with him, complimenting Naruto on his physical strength, while Naruto would be narrowing his eyes at the man, already telling that he goes way stronger than everyone else. So with this, Orochimaru then tries to fight them, as he begins to announce that he's here for Sasuke. And Sasuke, of course, was at first intimidated by the man, he would then shake it off along with Sakura, as after all, these guys were pushing themselves to become stronger because of Naruto. So due to this, Team 7 then decides that it's time for them to fight, as Naruto would lead the charge, rushing at Orochimaru using Ki to boost his movement. Orochimaru would of course be thrown off guard by Naruto's speed, but this is when he begins to avoid Naruto's attacks. As Naruto begins to fight against Orochimaru, Orochimaru himself could feel that every single time he were to block an attack of Naruto, he would honestly begin to actually feel like he was losing feeling in his arms. As he realized that Naruto was not one to play with, he would avoid a punch from Naruto as it would destroy the tree branch that they were on, as this is when Naruto would then leap up into the air as Orochimaru would then summon out a sword. At this, he tells Naruto that he will be too much of a hassle to deal with as he shoots out the sword to extend towards Naruto, trying to stab into him. Only for Naruto to instantly dodge out of the way in mid-air as he begins to use key manipulations to fly. This of course would actually surprise Orochimaru as this is when suddenly Naruto would then give him the meanest gut punch that Orochimaru ever felt. As this is when Orochimaru would then be thrown up into the air only for him to be tag teamed by Sasuke who ends up using a ginormous dragon firebomb, which yes he learned to do too, which ends up giving Orochimaru pretty bad damage. However, right before he can even try to recover, this is when suddenly Sakura herself would then throw an explosive kunai directly in his face, causing him to once again sustain more damage. Team 7 was literally dominating Orochimaru at this very instant, as the snake Sani would then reveal to be completely fine after the altercation, having no choice but to switch bodies. As he realized that these guys were no longer that to be taken lightly, he decides to retreat for now. However, he does make sure to pay attention to them, as every last one of them seems to hold unbearable amount of potential, especially Naruto, as you can see the boy staring down at him as well as emitting this very powerful energy. 
So with Orochimaru now escaping, Team 7 then decides it's time for them to continue on while also trying to remember the man exact and trying to find out who exactly he was. With Naruto already putting the pieces together as he could already tell who the man was, after all there were not many people known for using snake known jutsus. And especially since not a lot of people have the snake summoning contract. So soon after a while, Team 7 would arrive at the tower and they would soon gain entry as they had passed the exams with pretty much ease as this is when the preliminaries would then soon arrive. As the other teams would arrive, preliminary matches would then be announced with Naruto facing off against Kiba just like he did in canon with everyone else going up against the same matchups. Team 7 would have a much more of an easier time since no one was really weakened during this altercation and better yet they all have grown stronger. I mean, Sakura ends up beating Ino, Sasuke ends up beating that one guy, and Naruto just defeats Kiba. Kiba tries doing something with his fang over fang, but, I mean, shoo. Facing off against Naruto at this point, who's able to even give Kakashi a little bit of a challenge, I mean, you're not gonna win against that guy. As soon as all the fights come to pass, this is when it will be announced about the one month training, as this is where Team 7 then decides that this is the month where they're gonna separate from each other, as each one decides to go down their own path of strength. With Sasuke going to work with Kakashi and Sakura going to work with Kurenai, however Naruto himself would be left to his own devices, as he would be once again focusing on his control over Ki. As Naruto would spend a good portion of his time training and growing stronger and stronger, he would eventually end up encountering Jiraiya. The Toad Sanin had been looking for the boy after being tasked by Hiruzen to train him since Naruto didn't find him in this timeline. And of course, after encountering Jiraiya, Naruto... his respect for Jiraiya was honestly... It was very lofty, if you could say. While on one hand, respect Jiraiya for his strength, Jiraiya's other, you know, traits didn't really appeal to Naruto at all and made Naruto's view of him dimmed by a lot. Now, of course, although this kind of hurt Jiraiya, he did try training with Naruto only to find out that Naruto didn't use any elemental jutsus or anything like that. Naruto truly just relied on getting stronger and mostly relying on physical combat. And while Jiraiya tries to help Naruto open up to other jutsus, Naruto just didn't like them as he didn't see the points. After all, going through multiple hand signs just seems tedious. After all, what's the point of going through multiple hand signs when a simple punch can end an entire fight? And while Jiraiya tries to persuade Naruto to be more open about it, unfortunately Naruto is still standing tall and proud about his decision. However, this causes Jiraiya to only rely on the one jutsu that Naruto would eventually end up learning, but he just doesn't think it was going to be this soon as he ends up revealing that he actually knows one technique that you don't really need hand signs for, the Rasengan. He would reveal it to Naruto, and Naruto was honestly intrigued by it as Jiraiya begins to explain about the history of it, saying that it was created by the fourth Okage and how long it took him to even learn the technique. However, Naruto was not focusing on none of that as this is when he didn't realize it. He honestly was surprised that he couldn't even figure this out much sooner. He could create techniques using Ki. And this realization causes Naruto to begin to think differently about his training methods and already deciding a way to alter them. While at the same time, Naruto also accepts Jiraiya's offer of training as he actually wants to learn the Rasengan. Now, this excites Jiraiya as he also decides that he's also going to teach Naruto his, you know, Taijutsu, only for Naruto to decline as he already had a Taijutsu in mind. As he decided that he wanted to actually fuse his own fighting style along with the strong fist that he's seen Rock Lee use. The fight that he saw between Lee and Gara had actually caused Naruto to feel excitement once again at the prospect of someone who could challenge him. After all, he saw what true strength was after Lee was able to keep up with the literal vessel of the Shikaku, and due to this, Naruto was honestly interested in learning it. So for the next following weeks, Naruto would actually end up training in both the Rasengan as well as trying to learn more about the Eight Inner Gates, as that's the part that really interested Naruto. With Naruto learning the Rasengan in half the time that it took him in the original timeline. And as for the gates, Naruto was getting closer and closer to activating the very first gate, and already was already making up plans to do after he ends up learning the first gates. While well, also, on the backside of all of this, Naruto's key training had actually taken an interesting development, as Naruto was actually trying to craft his own technique. After being inspired by the four Jujutsu, Naruto realized that with Ki, he should be able to make his own techniques as well, and that's exactly what he was working for. As we soon flash towards the day of the tuning exams, we will see Naruto face off against Neji for the first match. As Neji tries to tell Naruto that it was his fate to lose to him, Naruto would just calmly stare at him, not at all showing any emotion. As the fight would begin, Neji would try attacking Naruto, hitting him with a few palm strikes that Naruto doesn't react to. We were finally seeing that Naruto was not going to do anything, Neji then tells Naruto that he's glad he accepted his fate, as this is when he then hits him with the 64 palms. However, 
Naruto doesn't fall back or anything. He tanks these blows and he looks at Neji, who are saying that Neji was disappointing. At this, Neji's eyes would then widen as this is when Naruto would then end up hitting Neji in the stomach with his knee, sending him flying back. However, before Neji can get any further, Naruto is already behind him and backs him back into the ground. As Neji tries to get up, Naruto would actually tell Neji just one thought, and that was the simple fact that Rock Lee would have been a better challenge than him. And after hearing this, Naruto would raise his leg high up into the air before slamming it hard down on Neji, knocking him out as well as cratering him, cratering him into the ground, with Naruto being declared the winner. After this, the next following fights would continue on, with this time, instead of Kankuro facing off against Shino, he would actually be facing, he would actually be facing off against Sakura. To which, it doesn't really matter since at the end of the day, Kankuro ends up losing because he forfeits. After that, the rest of the matches would continue on all the way until Sasuke going up against Gara. And as Sasuke would make his arrival known, this is when he would then bless the crowd as everyone would actually see him now honing not the one Tomoe, not the two Tomoe, but the three Tomoe Sharingan. He would be smiling as everyone would be applauding Sasuke's arrival as he would then turn to Naruto. As he would then declare, in his mind at least, that he would reach Naruto in the finals and that they would truly fight to see who's the strongest. Naruto would be staring down at Sasuke with a blank face as he was trying to see what exactly could Sasuke do with this new power. As this is when the fight against Gara and Sasuke would begin, with Sasuke honestly overwhelming Gara way more than he did in canon, as Sasuke would actually force Gara to awaken the Shikaku much sooner, which ends up leading to the Konoha Crush. The crush would happen as multiple Sand and Sound Shinobi would then jump down, attacking the hidden leaf village as Haruzen would then get trapped in the dome. Naruto would see this, but he would also see Gara scattering about with Sasuke hot on his tail. Naruto, after a while looking at this, this is when suddenly Kakashi would then arrive, as he ends up telling Naruto that at this point Naruto is already joning level and that he should go after Sasuke and help him. Naruto accepts this request as he decides to go after Sasuke. As we now move forward a little bit, as most of the fights will play out exactly the same, all the way until we see Sasuke facing off against Gara. Now in this timeline, Sasuke does not have the curse mark, but it's bounced, but it's bounced out by the fact that Sasuke has the three Tomoe Sharingan. The only thing is Sasuke's reserves haven't reached that high levels yet, so he's not able to maintain it for too long, and eventually begins to get overwhelmed by Gara. And before Gara could actually kill Sasuke, this is when Naruto would then make his arrival known. As he destroys the sand that was going to approach Sasuke, he would be standing tall and proud over the lone, the lone Uchiha survivor, as well as the Shikaku's vessel. Now, Shikaku would be laughing in his mental scape, as this is when he then orders Gara to attack Naruto, which Gara would do so. However, as the Saiyan tries to approach Naruto, it actually wraps around him as Naruto does nothing, with Gara smirking as he tries to activate the sand coffin, only to be surprised. Naruto was pushing back against the force. He couldn't believe his eyes. Naruto was just casually there, sitting down practically, as the sand couldn't like squeeze Naruto and crush him. Guard tries applying more and more force, using more and more of Shikaku's chakra, but it was pointless. Naruto would maintain there like a statue. After a while of seeing this, Naruto was tired of this pathetic display of weakness as he unleashes his own pressure, blowing away the sand as he approaches Gara in an instant. Seeing this, the sand defense tries to block Naruto's attack, but unfortunately, Naruto's attack was way too fast and strong as he ends up punching Gara with the energy fist, sending him flying through multiple trees. Gara ends up, you know, yelping out in pain, only for Naruto to once again appear in front of him as he ends up landing multiple blows at once. Gara couldn't believe that he was getting overwhelmed, so decided to resort to the one tactic that he could use, the Shikaku, and unleashing it fully. As this is when, finally, after letting out a ginormous cry and scream, Gara would unleash the full-on Shikaku as Naruto would stare at the ginormous raccoon, or sand raccoon more precisely. The Shikaku would be laughing as Gara would also use the Jutsu to make himself go to sleep, as he would be laughing before turning to Naruto, saying that he couldn't let Naruto get away with that disrespect, being the fact that Naruto was able to resist the sand from crushing him. As the Shikaku tries doing it once again to Naruto, once again Naruto remains completely still, however he has to admit it takes quite a bit of effort to push back against the sand this time, since Shikaku was really putting a lot of energy into it. So seeing the fact that this time he has to actually take it serious, Naruto decides to use this opportunity to unleash his stockpile of energy. As Naruto would burst with a generous amount of ki, the sand would instantly be blown off of him as he ends up leaping through a bunch of trees before finally end up flying up into the air right in front of the Shikaku. As this is when Naruto and the Shikaku would then get into combat. 
Naruto would rush at the Shikaku, reaching to its stomach, as this is when he then punches the Shikaku at full force. As Shikaku would actually be thrown and pushed back by the attack, surprising everyone who was watching it, as he himself says that it actually stung a little bit. He would then end up shooting out a bunch of wind blasts at Naruto, to which Naruto ends up dodging out the way of them. He ends up continuously fighting against the Shikaku using his bare fist, as the Shikaku was just way too slow to injure him. As he was kind of having enough about this whole entire ordeal, the Shikaku decides to try to end this, as he decides to charge up not a generous wind bullet, no, he decides to charge up a tailed beast bomb. Shikaku charges up the generous beast bomb as he looks at Naruto, telling him that he was so screwed now, as Tamari, who was watching all this, would actually be in fear as she begins to have memories of all the damage that Shikaku caused to her family, to her little brother, and just everything, and she was scared to see the devastation happening once again. Well, as for Naruto, he will stare at the ball of destruction that was currently being built up, and decides that if Shikaku is going to do that, then as a testament to its strength and as a way of showing respect, Naruto shall do the same. As this is when Naruto would then bring his hands up into the corner, as this is when he then charges up. Dark red energy begins to form into a sphere-like object as Naruto will look at the Shikaku. Both, individu both individuals charging up their techniques as Naruto's technique was actually setting pressure throughout the area, causing Tamari not being able to stand while Sasuke himself, being too exhausted to get up, was honestly be felt like he was getting pushed down into the ground. Him wondering how strong did Naruto get throughout this month. As both of the Shikaku and Naruto stare at each other, the Shikaku would then release the Tell Beast Bomb with Naruto releasing his new attack. An attack that he had invented, which only took him two weeks to make. And while he still hasn't completely mastered it yet, it was good enough. As the unstable amount of dark and red energy forms, this is when Naruto would then mentally yell out the attack. Colossal Cannon! He would unleash the beam-like attack, which if you want reference, it resembles the Kamehameha wave, except that instead of blue and white energy, it's instead red and black. As both the attacks would then clash with each other, Naruto would be using a ginormous amount of his ki into the attack, as the attack was currently being unstable since Naruto hasn't mastered it yet, but yet he kept pushing. While the Shikaku himself was blown away by the fact that this kid was able to create such a devastating attack to keep up with a tail beast bomb. And lo and behold, even though unstable, this thing was able to in some way, some forward stop the tail beast bomb. As after a while of just clashing, the Tell Beast Bomb, you know, got off his track and because of that aimed away from the village, while at the same time Naruto's unstable beam hit Shikaku right in the eye, almost dissolving almost half of its face. As Shikaku writhed in pain at the damage that it had taken, Naruto, feeling himself beginning to tense up from the attack and feeling the backlash from it, decides to end this fight as he rushes towards Gara. Seeing that Garo was still unconscious, Naruto decides that it was time for him to wake up as he gives Garo the most nastiest wake up punch in his entire life. As that punch was sending Garo right out of the Shikaku's head and causing the Shikaku to dissolve completely. As Garo will be sent flying, he'll be sent flying crashing through a bunch of trees until eventually hitting the ground. He would be, of course, barely hanging on to consciousness as he looks at Naruto as he tells him to get away, honestly fearing for his life. However, as Naruto approaches him, even though his muscles are aching, Naruto decides to look at Gara in the eyes for giving him a firm nod, saying that he respects him for his strength and hopes that one day they will fight again. And Gara, hearing this was of course surprised, as he asked Naruto why wasn't he trying to end him and everything, with Naruto saying that he respects Gara for his strength and that he could see potential in him, and saying that if next time Gara does not want things to end the way it is, or he doesn't want to feel this weak again, to train to become stronger. And Gara actually takes these words to heart as he tells Naruto that he truly is one of a kind. As eventually the Sand Siblings will come to pick up Gara and everything, the Konoha Crush will come to an end, with unfortunately Haruzen still passing away. So soon after this, as a way to replace the Hokage, Dry was sent out on a mission to locate Tsunade as he declined, he declined for the role of the fifth Hokage. And this time Naruto doesn't come along with him, instead Naruto continues on with his training. And also, he also gets assigned more missions. And the reason for that is because Naruto, after the Konoha crush, was declared a Chunin. While they wish they could give him a higher rank at this point, they'll have to wait until the next Okage had arrived. So with this, Naruto, of course, had been given the rank of Chunin and then continued going on you know, missions along with his team. Thanks to this, Team 7 had gotten even stronger, with Sasuke, of course, feeling jealous of Naruto. He felt jealous of his strength, but the one thing he can't deny was the fact that Naruto worked harder than him. 
Naruto would stay up for days and nights just training completely, while Sasuke, even he had to take a break once in a while. As due to this, Sasuke was like less like frustrated, but he still felt the urge to try to surpass Naruto. While Sakura herself, she honestly was pretty glad about how everything turned out, as she felt that she truly had grown and she no longer she no longer leans to Sasuke like you know as like a bug or anything. Now she truly has grown to become a powerful Konoichi. As the following weeks would go by with Team 7 just completing missions, getting stronger, it would eventually be a certain day where Sasuke would then be approached by well, Orochimaru subordinates, as by now Orochimaru needed a new vessel and Sasuke was the only one to fill that spot. So with that, the sound 4 tries jumping Sasuke in the dead of night, with Sasuke losing in this one, just like he did in canon. The only difference here was the fact that they needed stage 2 curse mark, all of them needed it, to face off against Sasuke. I mean, that's how tough the man was. And of course, after that beating, the sound 4 try recruiting Sasuke to join them, with giving Sasuke an, an entire day to pretty much give his decision, since in this one, some of them still needed to recover from the wounds that they got from his fight. Which, after an entire day has passed, Sasuke actually tried challenging Naruto once again, to which they did in the Spartan, to which Naruto once again was overwhelming Sasuke, and Sasuke felt like Naruto wasn't taking him seriously. So, after a while of debating on whether or not he should go, Sasuke then finally came to a decision. It was dead of night, but Sasuke had decided that he was going to leave the Hidden Leap Village. Now, of course, Sakura would be there as she tries to stop Sasuke, and even though, she helped, even though she had feelings for him, she put her duties as a Konoichi first, as she tells Sasuke that she's going to have to stop him. Unfortunately for Sakura, she already knew how the outcome was going to go. Sasuke, unfortunately, ends up neck chopping Sakura and stopping her from trying to stop him. And soon after this, Konoha would then announce that Sasuke would go missing, which Tsunade, who eventually returned back with Jiraiya, would put Naruto on the job to get back Sasuke. Naruto accepts this mission as he decides to go in in this one alone, to which Tsunade is actually okay with. After learning about Naruto from Jiraiya and everything, and even having her own encounter with him, which I decided not to really announce this because it's not really that important, but to put it pretty simple, she met Naruto, they at first didn't really hit it off because, you know, Tsunade didn't like the way he was so stoic and everything. But eventually, she did, come, she did come to start, you know, appreciating Naruto's company. As uh, so whenever Jiraiya was a pervert, he would always, like, knock some sense into him. And not only that, but Naruto didn't really bug her a lot. So she came to respect Naruto. Honestly, is honestly quite pleased with his company. So with that, Naruto would be sent out on a mission alone, to which he would do so with relative ease, as he would be catching up to the Sound 4. He would run into Jirobo being the first one, as he had caught up to them practically instantly, and as Jirobo sees Naruto there, he tries, you know, fending him off. Naruto would see Jirobo trying to seal him up in the mud dome, trying to suck out the chakra out of him, to which Naruto would just simply end up breaking out the dome with relative ease. As, of course, Jirobo tries once again, trying to stop Naruto, Naruto, in a flashing step, would knock out Jirobo, as he tells Jirobo that he's not worth the time. And that would kind of be a cycle for the rest of the Sound 4, as Naruto would encounter Kirimaru, uh, Saikon, and Ukon, and even to Yuya, and every last one of them would simply fall to him. As eventually, after a while, Naruto would even run into Kirimaru, as Sasuke tries to make, you know, a run to Orochimaru, as Naruto facing off against Kinimaru was, although kind of tougher than the other one, since Kinimaru's bone release is honestly kind of broken, not gonna lie to you, I high key wish we saw more of it. But still, Kinimaru would still fall nonetheless, as Naruto had proven to be way too strong for him to handle. It was eventually time for Naruto and Sasuke to have their encounter. At this, Sasuke would be standing on top of a, you know, the statue of Madara, as Naruto would rush towards him. As Nar at this, Naruto looks at Sasuke before telling him that it's time for him to return back, and that whatever Sasuke is doing, that he should stop. However, Sasuke himself decides to not say anything at all as he turns to Naruto with a look that seemed very conflicted. He would ask Naruto to fight him. Naruto, hearing this, would accept Sasuke's challenge as he could already tell that this was something that was you know, coming for a very long time. He knew that even though him and Sasuke had been sparring and training, they never truly went all out against each other, but now was the time. At this, both of them would then rush at each other as they would then both throw a punch. This punch connecting with Naruto's punch obviously overpowering Sasuke's, pushing him back, but Sasuke would then activate the three Tomoe Sharingan and instantly begin to get into action. Both of them would get into a Taijutsu spark, which Sasuke realized that he was too overpowered by Naruto in that regard, so decides to go into, well, 
ninjutsu. And Naruto, using his precise control of ki, is able to pretty much walk through the attacks or in straight of capacity just completely overpower them. As Sasuke himself is honestly quite peeved, peeved about all of this, but he kind of already saw this coming. After all, it's Naruto. And he already faced off against him once, he already knows his capabilities, and he already knows that he's far beyond him. But he doesn't give up. Sasuke ends up forming the Shidori as he rushes at Naruto, to which Naruto, seeing the Shidori coming, then decides to actually make a Rasengan to reciprocate. Both of them would clash with each other, with Naruto's Rasengan overpowering Sasuke's Shidori, since Naruto at this point had way more mastery over it. As Sasuke would be blown back, this is when he ends up getting up as he tells Naruto why is he still holding back. At this, Naruto shows no response as this is when Sasuke finally ends up revealing everything. He tells Naruto why he's been conflicted, what's been going on with him, and to put it pretty simple, Naruto actually had a ginormous effect on Sasuke in this timeline. While they weren't exactly the best friends, thanks to Naruto always being serious and always pushing himself, caused Sasuke to try to grow stronger as well. But not only Sasuke, but many other people. He pushed Sakura to become a honestly very good Konoichi. He actually caused Kakashi to stop being lazy, arrive on time, and actually train their team. And due to him, they all have gotten higher missions. But the one thing Naruto did was that he helped the team bond with each other. While Naruto didn't really say much or really hang out with any of them, whenever they were as a team and they were all like you know close to each other, they were actually able to talk to each other with Naruto just listening to everything. But they just felt nice around each other, you know? They were kind of like a group of homies hanging out. And Sasuke, he honestly built up connections. He literally would consider Sakura a friend and Kakashi a sensei. And he even considers Naruto, who doesn't even hang out with him a lot and just simply trains and focuses on himself. He considers Naruto a friend and a rival. And after releasing all of this, this is when Sasuke then reveals that in truth, he isn't quitting the Hidden Leaf Village. And that the main reason he's going over there is that he wants to get stronger. But at the same time, that when he does get stronger, he would then end up betraying Orochimaru, gather all the intel that he needs, and he will take him down and return back to the Leaf Village. Naruto hearing this will look at Sasuke as if he was an idiot, which Sasuke would honestly tell that it was. This wasn't that much of, this was not the best plan he can form, but it was something that he wants to do. As he looks at Naruto for a good strong point, he tells Naruto to give it all he got, as after this, you're going to go their separate ways. Naruto looks at Sasuke, asking him if he, if he truly was okay with this decision, with Sasuke giving him the firm nod. And with that signaling that there was time for them to continue on with their fight, Naruto would do. Except this time, he decides to release more of the limiters and let loose. As this is when suddenly Naruto would say, in his mind, First gate, open. At this, Naruto would feel himself begin to increase in power, as this is when he then opens, not one, not two, but three of the inner gates. Sasuke's eyes would widen as he sees Naruto's power boost as he as Naruto would then flare up his key as well. As the key and the chalk would actually have a very weird effect on each other, as the green the green energy of the gates opening up would then turn red. As this is when Naruto then finally ends up turning to Sasuke before giving him the come at me motion, pretty much you know taunting Sasuke. And seeing that Naruto was actually beginning to take him like somewhat seriously, Sasuke felt elated. As even though he could tell mentally and honestly at the bottom of his heart that he was going to lose this fight, he felt excitement at being acknowledged as one of the very few people that had Sasuke's respect. So with that, both Naruto and Sasuke would continue on the fight. Even though Sasuke was getting deeply overwhelmed, he, Naruto could see that he was improving by the second as the fight would draw on longer and longer. While Sasuke couldn't exactly dish out blows as strong as Naruto, he definitely had tricky ways to catch Naruto a little bit off guard, as he would always be finding out different and different ways to try to keep Naruto on his toes. Eventually though, unfortunately for Sasuke, the fight would have to come to an end, as Sasuke would then actually end up unleashing the Shidori, which he ends up actually boosting the power of it to a higher degree to where it would actually make the face of a dragon. I'm hinting of something. Guess what it is? Oh man, come on, it's pretty obvious. And as for Naruto, he would actually end up forming the Rasengan, but this time he added a little bit of key into it, as the blue energy that the Rasengan had would turn red, as it would look like a red star. Both Naruto and Sasuke would stare at each other, as this is when they suddenly rush at each other one last time, before colliding. 
the attacks causing destruction to the terrain around them, with both Hashirama and Madara statues getting slightly damaged. However, the outcome of the fight ended exactly as it was predicted. Naruto had won. Sasuke would be there as he currently right now was currently out of chakra, out of energy, and could almost barely move his body as he slowly gets to his feet. Naruto would honestly help Ka would actually help Sasuke as he ends up lifting Sasuke by the hem of his shirt and ends up bringing him to a dry area. As Sasuke would be there trying to dry off from the fight that they had, they would look at the valley of the end and all the destruction they caused with Naruto asking Sasuke one last time if he was okay with the decision that he made. With Sasuke saying that yes, he was. Again, Naruto tries to tell Sasuke that he's going to have repercussions for this and that the Hidden Leaf Village isn't going to be too friendly about it, to which Sasuke understands as well, to which he would take it completely. As after a while of just watching the Valley of the Yen and slowly regaining strength onto his body, Sasuke would then get up and try walking away before asking Naruto for one thing, that the next time they ever meet and get the opportunity, they, he wishes that they have another fight similar to this one. With Naruto accepting this one, and even going so far to call Sasuke a rival. And after hearing this, Sasuke was moved by this, as both of them would then go their separate ways, with Sasuke vowing that he's going to come back stronger, and after taking down Orochimaru, him and Naruto are going to have another fight, which he was not going to go down so easily. As after that moment, we move forward to when, when Naruto arrives back to Konoha, and as he does, he ends up giving Tsunade the report. As she ends up informing her about everything that Sasuke said, and after hearing this, Sonata is of course, you know, displeased about it, but she accepts this with Naruto actually informing her that they're going to have to put a bounty on Sasuke and add him to the bingo book. Since they didn't, Orochimaru is going to get suspicious. While she isn't happy how everything turned out to be, she accepted this as with that, Sasuke will be marked as a missing nin, and although in the public eyes he looks like a traitor, in reality, Sasuke is actually one of the best soldiers, and he was going to return back one day. And after this moment, Naruto would then return, you know, back to his training regimen, as this when Jiraiya would then actually ask Naruto if he wants to come along with him on a training journey, as a way for him to get stronger, while also mentioning that there's going to be a group of people coming after him. Now, Naruto, although he's still quite, you know, quite judging of the signing skills or training, he does feel like he needs some space away from the village, as there's only so much he can grow in this one village, and he needs more experience. So with that, Naruto would accept this, however he does tell Jiraiya and mention that there would not be any fooling around and this will be purely for training, to which Jiraiya agrees, you know? Although he does plan to once in a while sneak away to get some <clears throat> reach research. So with that being said guys, this will be the end of the part 1 towards Naruto, the series, as this is where we now move towards Shippuden. So we now turn to two and a half years later, as we see Naruto arrive back at the Hidden Leaf Village along with Jiraiya. At this, Tsunade ends up getting a report about how Naruto's strength had grew, and due to that, she decided to test him, making him face off against the current Team 7, this being Kakashi and Sakura. Sakura, during this time, instead of being a tuning as she was in the original timeline, she actually ends up becoming a full on Jonin since she takes her career much more seriously, much earlier than she did in the canon. And as for Kakashi, well, he's still the same, except I would say he's more stronger in this one, because like I said, he actually decided to take things seriously with his team. And although he's kind of upset about how everything turned out for Sasuke, he decided to make sure that he was not going to let something like that happen again. So with that being said, both parties would instantly get into a fight, as Kakashi and Sakura would then bum rush Naruto. Now Naruto, of course, instantly gets into the Taijutsu battle with them, and of course, just like they expected, they were completely overwhelmed. Naruto was able to keep up with both Sakura and Kakashi relatively easily, as thanks to his training with you know his own fighting style, as well as the training that Jiraiya put him through, He's pretty much more than strong enough to handle both of them on his own. So seeing that Taijutsu is basically pointless, they instantly decide to go into using Ninjutsu and Genjutsu, to which Naruto takes these attacks fully. He literally just walks right through them. Now this would kind of actually be kind of ironic since this was the exact same thing Naruto did during their very first bell test. But now Naruto had full mastery over his key, and he was ready to show it off. As this is when finally Naruto decides to go on the offensive as he rushes at Kakashi, with Kakashi having no choice but to be forced into a Taijutsu battle with Naruto and instantly for it to become a big mistake. As Kakashi will be completely overpowered by Naruto, as he decides to try stunning him at least, maybe trying to think of a way to outsmart him, however, just as he was about to use some lightning affinity to stun Naruto, Naruto would actually stop him by simply staring at him. 
Kakashi would feel a ginormous amount of pressure set upon him, freezing him in his track. As with him being unable to move, Naruto was able to land a clean blow into Kakashi's dome, which, you know, the head. And this causes Kakashi to be knocked unconscious and taken out the fight. Sakura, of course, would be surprised at this. However, she is not going to just simply, you know, surrender at this point. As she actually got some training from Tsunade in this one. And while she hasn't mastered all of Tsunade's teachings, she still is pretty proficient at using it. As she decides to try making a Genjutsu to kind of, you know, daze Naruto for a little bit. As is when she then tries to go for an attack. Unfortunately for her, similar to Kakashi, her efforts were ending in failure as Naruto is able to break out of any genjutsu she threw at him. And due to this, when she got up close to Naruto to try to land a blow, Naruto is able to easily dodge out of the way and instantly is able to literally, you know, knock her out with a simple punch to the stomach. At this point, both members of Team 7 had been completely defeated as Naruto would loom over them. However, Naruto does end up giving them a nod of respect as he was honestly impressed with their growth. And honestly, had it been anyone else, they probably would have defeated them. So after this examination of Naruto's strength, Tsunade would actually already give Naruto the Jonin rank, as he was still a Chunin when he left, but now he was Jonin. So with that, we will continue on with the rest of the arc, as Team 7 would soon get informed that Gara had been captured by the Akatsuki. In this one, he put up more of a fight, but unfortunately for him, he still lost. But he did leave some lasting damage to both parties. Due to this, Team 7 was then dispatched, along with Tamari, to the Sand Village, to which they end up getting informed about all the events that had occurred, as well as the fact that Kankuro was poisoned. So, after healing Kankuro, as well as meeting Chiyo, they would eventually end up deciding to go track down both Data and Satori, with Naruto actually deciding to go up ahead. Sooner or later, he would then find some trails to find exactly where they were, which he arrived at this base, to which the rest of Team 7 would slowly arrive as well. Seeing this, they at first see a disgenomous seal blocking out their path, which they at first try to decide a way to decipher it, only for Naruto to appear in front of it, as this is when he then yells out mentally, Red Flare. A compressed ball of key would then form in the palm of Naruto's hand, as he then flicks it directly towards the base, as the ginormous rock that was, you know, blocking the base would be automatically demolished, as this will grant them exposure into the base, while Data and Sorcery would just be in shock that they had just been intruded. And to make matters even worse for them, Gara hadn't completed the ritual because the Shikaku has not been extracted from him just yet. Due to this, Naruto is able to put a plug on that as he's able to grab Gara to safety, and not only that, the rest of the Team 7 had decided to stop Data and Sorcery from interfering. Due to this, a general's battle breaks off as Data and Sorcery realize that they're not going to be able to win, so they try to escape. Unfortunately for Sorcery, he ends up dying as Shiro and Sakura team up in order to take him down. While at the same time, Data is also not getting away because Naruto and Kakashi are there to stop him. As he tries to make a generous explosive bird, Naruto literally is able to walk right through the explosion unfazed as Data realizes that he's not going to be able to defeat him. So he tries to make a generous explosion to get away, but unfortunately for him, Naruto is not going to give him the opportunity as he's, already, as he's already in front of him and is able to knock him out, preventing him from trying to escape. So due to this, Datoro ends up getting captured, and Sasori is, well, dead. As this will put the end to the Kazekage rescue mission arc, as with this, Gar ends up returning back to the village, he ends up going back to running it, while the rest of Team Sam ends up returning back, with actually getting the peaceful contract from the Sand Village, now making the Sand Village, the Sand village and the Hidden Leaf Village at peace. As moving forward with the rest of the timeline, we would see Naruto going on a few more missions on his own since he is a Jonin, and he will be able to complete these missions while at the same time pushing himself once again even further. After all, there's still many, many more walls to climb in order to become the strongest. And eventually, Naruto would actually be assigned a mission to work with Team 7 once again, as they had just gotten rumors that Orochimaru was going to appear at the bridge in order to make a, a kind of a deal with the Akatsuki. So due to this, Team 7 ends up getting dispatched, to which they eventually end up finding the bridge that they were talking about, with the leaders instead of being Kakashi and the rest of them, it would actually be Yamato and Sai. As soon, Kabuto would then arrive at the bridge, as they try to make their deal to, you know, falsely capture Kabuto, but this is when Orochimaru would then arrive, and due to this, things instantly break up, with Team 7 facing off against Kabuto and Orochimaru. However, it will mostly be Naruto facing off against Orochimaru, as he still wanted to fight him again after the last occurrence, this time on his own. As the fight between Naruto and Orochimaru would go underway, this fight goes completely opposite to what it did in canon, as instead of Naruto having to push himself even further against Orochimaru, it will be Orochimaru desperately pushing himself further against Naruto, with Naruto not even budging. 
no matter what type of techniques he throws at Naruto, no matter what attacks, Naruto is able to overpower through all of them and is able to land lasting damage on Orochimaru to the point where he's literally slowly fading out of consciousness between fights. As he tries and tries again, he realized that it was pointless to face off against him, so he decides to use the Kusanagi sword. I don't know if I said it right, I'm sorry if I didn't, but let's move on. Pretty much the sword is meant to kill anyone who ends up getting stabbed with it, as he tries stabbing Naruto with it, only for Naruto to completely just break the blade as soon as it makes contact with his skin. As due to all the training that Naruto has put his body through, as well as the mastery of his key, Naruto's skin is literally impenetrable to the point where no daggers or knife is, or heck, even a blade is not going to be able to cut through him. So seeing the fact that now he was completely pointless to face off against Naruto and that he truly was outclassed, Orochimaru tries to make his get away, but unfortunately for him, Naruto was not going to give him the opportunity. As Naruto would barrage Orochimaru with multiple blows, this is when he once again uses his technique, known as Red Flare, to pretty much just blow up Orochimaru. But the only way Orochimaru is able to escape is by, of course, like, you know, turning into a small little snake as he does the body shifting, as he tries to make an escape towards his compound. Now, eventually, the rest of Team 7 are finished up with the rest of their battles, as they decide to follow Orochimaru to his compound, with Naruto being able to send him. Eventually, they arrive at the compound, and instantly, they just start intruding and demolishing the place, looking for Orochimaru. So eventually, they end up finding Orochimaru as well as someone else with him, this being Sasuke. Sasuke would be there looming over all of them, as this would cause, you know, everyone except for Naruto to become very emotional at it. As Orochimaru then tells Sasuke that he should be able to finish them off now, considering the fact that Sasuke was so-called his perfect project, the one he actually succeeded in. As Sasuke, after hearing this, will instantly begin to blitz into hand signs, as seeing this, Orochimaru laughs with the glee as he looks at all of them, as everyone else was just too petrified in his eyes to do anything. All the while, Naruto was staring directly at Sasuke with a blank expression, with Sasuke doing the same thing. As after finishing the hand signs of his jutsu, lightning begins to spark out of Sasuke's hand as all of them begin to tense up preparing for a fight, except for Naruto, who could already tell what Sasuke's true intentions were. As just as Orochimaru prepares to laugh at all of them, emphasizing it that they're about to face the true power of Uchiha, Sasuke would then betray Orochimaru as he ends up grabbing his sword, the very sword that Orochimaru gave to him, and stab him in the chest. Orochimaru's eyes will widen as he looks at Sasuke, as this is when Sasuke would then turn to him, actually activating the Mangeki Yosharingan, as Orochimaru asked just a simple question, why did he do this? With Sasuke saying that he got what he wanted, and now this was going to be the end of their contract. Seeing the fact that Sasuke had just been a whole spy this entire time, even though he had a bounty, Orochimaru tries to tell Sasuke that it was pointless and that, you know, he's going to be treated as a traitor over there with Sasuke already saying that he gladly accepts any punishment that comes towards him. So seeing the fact that Sasuke was betraying him, Orochimaru tries to do the body substitution. However, sadly for him, Sasuke had actually infused lightning energy into the sword, preventing him from trying to do the substitution. So due to this, Orochimaru actually dies in this one. As he fails to escape out of his body, and due to this, Sasuke has successfully killed, well, Orochimaru. And everyone will be there to witness it as all of them were just confused as he, they didn't really know why Sasuke had betrayed Orochimaru. At this, Sasuke ends up looking at Naruto once again as he ends up actually explaining to Naruto that there's still more things that he needed to do. As he then says that after he completes it, he will return back to the village. At this, Yamato begins to make some demands saying that Sasuke ends up coming back with them, but Naruto says nothing more as he ends up giving Sasuke a nod. At this, Sasuke would nod as well as a show of respect to his friend as he would look at every last person that was there, especially Sakura, because, you know, he actually considered her a friend in this timeline, a friend that he had to leave behind in order to get stronger, as he ends up sending her a nod, as well as a small smile, as he ends up vanishing away in a bolt of lightning. Sakura would be there, of course, you know, tearing up at the brim of everything she's seen, while Yamato was cursing about everything, Sai was just being Sai, and Naruto took in all the events with a stoic face, as he usually does. So with that, Team 7 ends up returning back to the Hidden Leaf Village, and after bringing Orochimaru along as a show of proof of them completing the mission, they are now able to continue doing what they need to, which the rest of the time is just spent them doing missions, with the core members of Team 7 continuing to get even stronger. Sakura was trying to become stronger, so that way the next time she sees, she sees Sasuke, she's able to bring him back, not caring about anything that was going on with him, she just wants him to come back and just, you know, pay for everything that he's done as a way of being a good friend, of course. After all, she needs to make sure that her friend, you know, gets his head out of his ass. While Naruto was just training to become the strongest as usual, 
once again forming multiple different techniques, while also at the same time he was making connections with the Nine Tails. Throughout the time of his training, he had actually gotten closer with the Nine Tails to the point where both the Nine Tails and Naruto would call them respectable comrades, to the point to where the Nine Tails actually sees Naruto as an equal. As throughout the rest of the time, eventually we end up getting a few things going on, such as Asuma eventually dying, and of course, the rest of Asuma's team getting it back in blood and facing off against the other Kasuki members, such as Hidan and Kakazu. In this one, I would say that Naruto does help out in this one, but he's able to defeat Kakazu much easier, as he ends up defeating him with the combination of the Dark Flare along with the Rasengan. However, things don't go so good for so long, as eventually, unfortunately, news began to pass over that Jiraiya the Gallant had unfortunately passed away, and Naruto actually was affected by this, by this news, considering the fact that Jiraiya was stronger than he was in canon in this one, similar to all the characters here. Because like I said, he, like many others, have been inspired by Naruto's drive to become stronger and just how much effort he puts in. Due to this, Dry is actually able to master stage mode and everything. It's just that the simple power of the Renegon is just ridiculous to the point where Dry unfortunately is not able to keep up with pain for too long. And not only that, but he was getting jumped by the six people. Come on now. At least he went down swinging and at least he was still strong enough to get the message across about who pain was. So RP to the legendary Toad Sage. And his death actually did leave an impact on Naruto, as he was honestly really shocked that Jiraiya had lost, however, this honestly caused him to also gain a new goal in mind. While Jiraiya had wished for peace, unfortunately Naruto just didn't see fit to carry it out. However, instead he will bring justice to all those who deserve it, and this will kind of solidify as Naruto's full on character development, as instead of being completely, well I guess on how you view it, selfish as he only focused on, you know, you know, getting stronger and on himself, now Naruto looks for not only getting stronger, but to be strong enough to deliver justice to those who truly need it and deserve it. As we now break away from the Jiraiya arc, we can now turn to the fated battle between brothers. Sasuke throughout his time being away had just been purely training, mastering his element of, you know, lightning affinity, and even trying to master the Sharingan to a certain degree. But finally, he felt confident enough to take on Itachi, so he decides to get to him. Eventually, Sasuke finds Itachi as he sees him waiting for him, and of course, the fight between them then breaks off. And just like in canon, Sasuke wins. But this time, it's actually a legitimate victory. Since instead of Sasuke, you know, breaking on the ground in terror and trying to back away, Sasuke actually has grown in power to the point where he's actually able to keep up with Itachi, to the point where he's even able to use Susano as both brothers would have a Susano versus Susano battle, with eventually Itachi running out of energy, just as Sasuke Susano was also on the break of being destroyed. As eventually Itachi would be at his last legs, he would look at Sasuke for a while, as Sasuke would walk towards him, wielding the sword that, Oro that he used to kill Orochimaru, as he turns to Itachi, asking him one question, if he felt any remorse for what he'd done. And with his S-tier level acting, Itachi would actually say that, no, he doesn't. And looking like a true villain in the eyes of Sasuke, Sasuke would end up ending Itachi right before him using the sword to stab into him, with Itachi passing away with a smile on his face, as he tells mentally in his mind that he will continue loving Sasuke and looking over him. So with this, Sasuke has successfully defeated Itachi, which means it was finally time for him to return back to the village. And speaking of the village, we will now turn to the next arc that follows along, this being Pain Assault on Konoha. After so long and after waiting for so many years to attack the Nine Tails, finally it was time. As just like that, the Akatsuki will break off with Pain rushing to Konoha, and of course he ends up arriving floating up in the air and using the Shin of Tensei to just wipe out a bunch of the village. The village tries their best to fight off against him, but unfortunately Pain is way too overpowering for them. The Renegon is just way too busted for them to deal with. I mean, literally, in the eyes of some people, it's the power of a god. But unfortunately, Pain had no idea what the true power was until now. As Naruto, who had just been returning back from a mission, would see the destruction, he would instantly end up arriving into the village to see all the damage that was done. His stoic expression breaking as he finally shows hardened eyes, as this is when one of the paths of Pain would try to attack Naruto. This being the Ashura path, as using a mechanical rocket tries to blow Naruto up, only for Naruto to instantly overpower it and deflect it, as it ends up getting sent flying right back at it actually. This would have caught it off guard as it would end up getting hit by the attack, getting slightly damaged as the rest of the path of pains would then arrive, with the main one appearing in front of Naruto telling him to surrender and come with them. 
and Naruto, once again after taking a hard look at the village and all the destruction, then turns to Pain. With his eyes hardening as he then stares directly at Pain, he ends up getting into a combat stance, which I don't know too many of y'all, but this would actually be something very terrifying if you actually knew Naruto. As throughout the entire times Naruto would fight, he would never instantly breaks off into a combat stance. He waits until the enemy first attacks him, and then after a while, that's when he then starts, you know, hitting and fighting back. Now, this time, Naruto is going to go the offensive for the very first time. As this is when, of course, Naruto ends up appearing in front of the very first pain, the pain that had attacked him. And right before the pain even get a chance to react, Naruto would then end up obliterating it completely, as he ends up barraging with multiple blows before he can get a chance to respond. This will catch all the pains off guard as they instantly try separating, only for Naruto to appear in front of the animal path. It tries to, you know, kick Naruto away, only for Naruto to catch his leg, and this is when suddenly Naruto would then sh shoot off a dark flare directly into its face, blowing it up, as that would be two down with only four of them left to go. The human path and the Preta path try jumping Naruto together, as the diva path will try staying behind to get a read on Naruto's movements. However, Naruto would just weave out the way of both of them as he ends up hitting them both so fast that they couldn't see it, but they're not out of the fight just yet. As Naruto rushes towards the Diva Path, the Diva Path will try activating the Shinra Tensei, which it actually does work and actually pushes Naruto back a couple of feet actually. As Naruto would didn't, didn't take any real damage from the attack and honestly just felt like a breeze of wind just pushed him back, this is when the other paths tried to attack him only for Naruto to instantly just kind of flex on them pretty much as he sends a burst of his key, blowing them away. As Naruto would stare directly at the diva path, with the diva path doing the same thing, this is when the fight decides to reach new levels as Naruto decides to finally let go. As he ends up releasing the stockpile of energy, as he ends up flashing with an enormous amount of pressure setting in. While they couldn't see it, us the viewer can, as we literally see Naruto erupting with red energy, as he ends up screaming out. As after unleashing this energy, the paths then decide to work together as they begin to work in unison to fight off against Naruto, with Naruto now taking the fight 100% seriously. He instantly ends up blitzing like the pains that are trying to attack him as he appears in front of the diva path as it tries to use Shinra Tensei as each time it would do, Naruto would be pushed back slightly, but the thing was that every single time Naruto would get closer and closer to hitting him. Naruto was moving way too fast for the diva path to you know keep up with as soon as it will begin to actually feel damage, it was getting overwhelmed. Seeing this, the others tried jumping Naruto as well, but Naruto didn't even give them a chance as he ends up teleporting behind them, as this is when he then sends a burst of key directly at two of the paths, this being the human path as well as the Preta path. As this is when, due to just how much force the Naruto is pushing on them, they'll be completely demolished by the pressure, leaving nothing behind. As this will be one of Naruto's new techniques that he had created, known as Red Quake, which pretty much ends up sending a generous amount of key directly at the opponent to the point where their bones and their bodies are just completely crushed into it. Like literally, he is literally overpowering them with just his aura alone. As this one of leaving both the Naraka path as well as the Diva path alone. At this, Pain tries to use the Naraka path in order to bring back the others, but Naruto is already in front of it. As before the Pain even got a chance to summon out the King of Hell, it was sent directly towards him as Naruto would end its life by crushing it with the Rasengan, leaving Pain being the only one left to face off against Naruto. At this, Pain had enough as he decides to try facing off against Naruto, but now the Shinra Tensei had no effect on him. He would walk right through it, just as he did with many other Jutsus. Pain couldn't believe it. No matter how hard he pushed Naruto away, it just didn't work. At this, he having enough of all of this, then decides to summon out his ultimate technique, the Chibaku Tensei, as he ends up creating this miniature black hole which tries sucking up a majority of Konoha as he decides to try to crush Naruto. As the enormous meteor that was looming over the village would be looming over Naruto as it then rushes to crush him. However, unfortunately for Pain, Naruto was just someone who was on a higher plane of existence than he ever could be, as this is when Naruto would then charge up key to the palm of his hands. As this is when a dark red sphere would then be formed as Naruto would look at the meteor that was descending upon him. As this is when Naruto would yell out the name of his attack. Colossal Cannon. At this, Naruto would release his now perfected attack that he had created, as the beam of energy would be so powerful it easily ends up obliterating the meteor, and along with it, Pain as well. Pain would be shocked by the attack as he could do nothing more, would be absolutely just demolished by it. As by the time the attack was over, the meteor was left with nothing, as it was now just simply dust, 
with Payne himself being dead, leaving nothing behind. However, if you thought it was over, it wasn't, as Naruto still had one more thing to do. As this is when he's able to pick up on a familiar energy that was similar to Payne, as he ends up flying over there using his key. As eventually he ends up stumbling upon Conan and Nagato. And similarly to canon, Nagato tries to explain all the actions he had done to Naruto, but the thing is, Naruto would hit him with stone hard facts. And this is when Naruto actually actually tells his goal to Nagato, which is pretty simple to bring him justice. As this is when he tells Nagato for repercussions for his actions, he must atone for them. And Nagato, he honestly has to admit, Naruto is speaking straight up facts. I mean, technically, he's over here looking like the bad guy, even though he wanted peace, but the way he went about it was just simply wrong. And also because of the fact that he knows Naruto is going to overpower him, he accepts the punishment as he decides to use the Rene Rebirth in order to bring back everyone that was killed during the pain attack. Due to this, everyone ends up coming back, and Nagato ends up passing along, with Konan being there to worship his memory. Now, as Naruto is preparing to leave, though, of course, this is when he actually ends up sensing something, as he ends up sensing an individual hiding from them and waiting for Naruto to leave. This will be Obito. As Obito would be there waiting for Naruto to leave so that way he can get what he wants, unfortunately for him, Naruto was not going to give him the opportunity. As Naruto would use instant transmission to seemingly just disappear, Obito would use this opportunity to try getting to Nagato, only for Naruto to appear right in front of him. Instantly, this catches Obito off guard as he tries to use the Kamui to warp Naruto away. However, unfortunately for him though, things didn't work out as he intended. As Naruto would seemingly end up getting warped away, Obito would think that he's going to have to take care of that later as he rushes towards Konan. However, this is when, to his surprise, someone ends up appearing behind him, and before Obito gets the chance, he'll be slammed hard into the ground. His brain ends up getting a little bit rattled as this is when he looks up to see Naruto in his surprise since he thought he got warped by the Kamui. At this, Naruto asks why he was exactly watching them, only for Konan to just reveal everything. Pretty much explaining that all the actions that Nagato had taken was simply just because of him, with him being the one behind it all. And of course, hearing this, Naruto isn't exactly too pleased. As Obicho tries to make an escape, Naruto actually ends up warping along with him as they will both be sent to Kamui Dimension. At this, Obito ends up, you know, being surprised that Naruto was warped along with him, as he ends up laughing at Naruto's stupidity, pretty much saying that from now on he's trapped here. Only for him to be surprised as Naruto would reverse it back on him, as now he was trapped with Naruto. As Naruto begins to fight against Obito, Obito would try his hardest to try to do any lasting damage, but like every other opponent that faced it off against Naruto, he was just way too strong for them to handle. With Naruto barraging him with blows and key blasts, unfortunately, Obito just didn't stand a chance. As he tries to use Kamui one last time to warp away, Naruto will once again appear in front of him and warp along with him. And before Obito can do anything else, Naruto will end up hitting him with a hard stare as his eyes end up flashing red. This will actually cause Obito to stop moving as Naruto was hitting him with a bunch of key, preventing him from moving. As Obito tries to move and tries to use his technique, unfortunately, now was the end as Naruto was applying more and more pressure. At this, Naruto looks at Obito for a solid minute, explaining that he doesn't even know who he was or exactly what his agenda was. But since he caused all this suffering, consider this retribution. As just like that, Obito, the only thing he could end up seeing was Naruto staring at him with that same stoic expression as he ends up cursing himself before finally he ends up passing away, with Naruto using his red quake technique to completely obliterate Obito, leaving nothing left behind. Which, funny enough, after that very moment, and after Kakashi is of course brought back and everything, at the same time he would sense that the Sharingan that he had held for so long finally ended up leaving him, as he ends up putting his hand over his eye, seemingly being conflicted and wondering what happened, before eventually, after a while of thinking about all the events had passed, he probably thought that this may be his way of forgiving himself, and the universe basically telling him to finally let go of the past. As with this, Naruto would then walk out of there with Konan taking Nagato's body to bury him, and Naruto allowing her to do what she wants as he ends up leaving, as this would put the end to the Akatsuki. As finally, we now move forward once again into the future, as by now multiple months have passed since the events of the Pain Assault arc. With the Akatsuki now gone, the Hidden Leaf Village was not in any impending danger, and with Oito gone, there was not that, you know, Madara running around, as Naruto had actually put an end to Madara's plans. 
at the same time, replacing Tsunade since she was currently still recovering from the whole, you know, pain incident, it will actually be Kakashi as he steps up to take care of everything with him being the new Hokage temporarily. And as for where that leaves Naruto, well, Naruto throughout this time has once again continued on with his training to become the strongest in of all time and all of history. As Naruto would soon be done with his training though, this is when he would then sense someone approaching and someone he was familiar with. He ends up turning to the side as out of the shadows, you would see Sasuke. Naruto will look at Sasuke stoically as he ends up informing him that since he's here, he has to capture him. While well, Sasuke fully agreeing as this is when he then tosses over the head of Donzo actually. Sasuke had just gotten back from ending the man's life after he found out information about the entire Uchiha clan incident. And while just like in canon he was furious at the Hidden Leaf Village, he decided to take that anger on the very man who instigated everything and was the one to push that action towards the village, Donzo. And not only that, but and like I said, in this timeline, Sasuke had actually built connections with the rest of Team 7 to the point where he would go so far to call every last one of them his friends. At this, he ends up looking at Naruto, telling him that he can turn them in, but before they do, he wants to have a fight. And of course, hearing this, Naruto ends up accepting, already knowing that with Donzo being dead, News are going to spread over all around at the fact that he just died, and of course, eventually Sasuke is going to be found out. So with that, both individuals end up getting taken to the Valley of the End by Naruto. As both of them will be at the Valley of the End, they will both stare at each other one last time, remember the last time they fought, as this is when they then get into their stances. Naruto finally taking the initiative to fight this time and not waiting for Sasuke to throw the first blow. This was actually Naruto's way of showing Sasuke that he sees him as an opponent and will take him seriously. And Sasuke couldn't ask for anything better. With that, the fight up between them would then begin. As Sasuke would rush towards Naruto, he would instantly end up using the Shidori, trying to get any like static wounds on Naruto, trying to slow him down. But Naruto would easily dodge out of the way as he ends up gut punching Sasuke, sending him up to the head of, of Madara. And before Sasuke gets a chance to recover, Naruto would already appear behind him and slam him back down into the water. As Sasuke would be hit pretty hard and almost be knocked unconscious, he would instantly begin to, you know, recover as he ends up flipping over before activating a Mataratsu. As Naruto would be hit with the Black Flames, as he would have no choice but to use his key and use it carefully on this one since a Mataratsu just doesn't go away that easily. And seeing the fact that Naruto was distracted for a moment, Sasuke would use the opportunity to release Dragon Flame Bombs. As Naruto ended up releasing the, you know, the Amaterasu that was on him, he would be hit by the fireballs as this is when Sasuke would then rush over at Naruto as quickly as possible as he would end up creating a kind of Shidori net as he uses it to try to stun Naruto. However, by the time the smoke clears, it would then be revealed that Naruto had completely just disappeared from the area that he wants in and this is when suddenly he would appear behind Sasuke, grabbing him and kind of judo flipping him as he ends up hitting Sasuke's back on the water causing a generous clap to be heard. As Sasuke will be screaming out in pain, this is when Naruto will then suddenly end up spinning him and slamming him directly into the rock of Madara. As Sasuke tries his best to, you know, remain conscious, he ends up smiling at Naruto, telling him that he is exactly as he expected him to be, as this is when he activates the Susano, telling Naruto that he was no longer holding back. At this, Naruto will respond with something surprising to Sasuke, as instead of giving Sasuke the same stoic look, or like a hardened stare, Naruto would instead actually grin. Something that Naruto never did ever. Ever, I mean. At this, Naruto would say that he was going to do the same thing, as this is when he then finally releases his stockpile of energy, as he ends up shaking the tides of the <laughs> Valley of the End, as Naruto's very presence was literally warping the foundation of that area. At this, Sasuke ends up seeing this, and he already sees the gap that was going to happen. He already saw that he was going to lose. Yeah, he felt pure excitement at it as is when he then activates his Amaterasu on the Susano, causing it to have a flaming arrow as he shoots it at Naruto. With Naruto challenging the attack with his own as he ends up unleashing his Colossal Cannon. Both attacks blow past each other just barely as, Susu as the Susano's arrow along with the Amaterasu ends up hitting Naruto, with Naruto's Colossal Cannon absolutely destroying Sasuke's Susano and sending him packing. As both of the attacks will slam against the respective parties, as the smoke would then clear from the attacks, as by now, the Valley of the End is just completely gone, as Naruto's attacks had just practically destroyed the whole thing. As the smoke would then be, you know, gone, this is when we would then see it, as Sasuke would be there, completely unconscious, bloody, beaten, but the one surprising thing was that he had a smile on his face. All the while, Naruto would be there, completely fine, however, 
you could see that his clothing was no more as he was just casually just being shirtless as Sasuke's attack had destroyed his clothing. As Naruto would look at Sasuke for a solid second before suddenly giving him a nod as he tells Sasuke that he truly does respect him as his rival. Now, after this fight, eventually Sasuke would be, of course, turned into Konoha. Luckily, he was able to survive the attack. And with a lot, and I mean a lot of medical help, he was able to continue breathing and living. However, he did have to face his sentence, to which he accepted. As for many years, Sasuke will be locked up. At the same time, though, we end up turning over to the future as this will be kind of a small little breakaway from this as it will be Naruto the last. And similar to the story, Naruto at this point in time had completely grown up now. He was honestly the tallest out of everyone, but not only that, but he was fully declared at this point the strongest shinobi in all of history. As he had challenged many people, even challenged all the Bijus, to which they actually had been defeated by him. And along with that, he would also eventually end up facing off against the Otosuskis, as, you know, the one that was trying to steal Hanabi's eyes. And Naruto was pretty much taking care of all that by himself. I mean, coming, that's where he thrills in. He's already Jiren's reincarnation. With Naruto being able to take on the Otosuski with little difficulty, and him being able to legit just destroy their home. As Naruto, after this experience, will be truly reigned as the strongest, and the strongest in all the universe, as well as the strongest throughout all of history of the world of Naruto. As this will conclude, what if Naruto was Jiren's reincarnation? Thank y'all so much for watching the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do, then do me a favor, please subscribe to the channel. It does a lot for me. And also comment down below, because I don't know why, but YouTube's algor uh, algorithm works that pretty much if you're able to type a lot in the comments, you guys, you know, it attracts more attention to my videos. So that will be pretty helpful if you guys could do that. If you don't want to, it's okay. I mean, you don't really have to do it. I bring you content because I want to, guys. But yeah, with that being said, guys, it's your host, Seiji Samurai, and he's signing off. Peace and have a lovely day.